Hello and welcome back to the second edition of the conversation about the archetypes and the soul with Marion Lockett. We have already done the first uh, episode and this time you can find it on the wisdomfactory.net. This time we want to talk about the ages, the soul ages, while in the first time we talked about the roles. And when you see behind Mayon, there are all these colored columns and every color is connected with one soul role. And when you go there to the other recording, maybe it's not absolutely necessary before you watch this one, but it is very informative. Uh, so today, Marion, I don't think you need to say a lot about you today, but just just start. And they can people can find more on the first page we have done, the first edition. And today about the soul ages, which I personally found very illuminating. So over to you. Yeah. Uh, hello, Heidi. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be uh, with you again. Um, yeah, something about me. I'm uh, working as a um, spiritual mentor and coach uh, in Germany. And I'm connected uh, with the archetypes of the soul since more than 25 years. And um, in the meanwhile, it has been grown to a big part of my work. And uh, yeah, so I'm very glad, Heidi, that you invited me uh, to spread some of the information to more people, because I think um, it makes sense. And it makes sense in multiple ways. Uh, it helps to understand much better um, yourself and other people and also what happens to the world and especially uh, the topic we are um, we are discussing now today the soul ages help to um, understand much better what's going on in the world and what's going on in our uh, surroundings and why some people mm, have the feeling that they don't really belong to the world somehow. And how this is connected maybe to the topic of the soul ages. Yeah, we, sh we should say at that point that uh, this, how can you say, it's not a theory, this teaching uh, about the archetypes of the soul is conceived and written in German mainly. And I thought it would be very important to, to, to have it published more also to, to an English speaking uh, community because I find it so important to know about it. I think there's only one book from Wade Hassermann and uh, Schmolke is translated in, in English, very small. Uh Booklet. In the meantime, in the meantime, there there are three, I think. Oh, are they? The okay. The, soul, uh, the archetypes of fear. These both are translated into English, and um, there is a third one, um, the worlds of the soul, um, which is already uh, published or is about to be published, I don't really know. Oh, that's good. So anyway, with what we are doing, we give an introduction to that. And then when you are inspired, you buy the book in English or learn German. <laughs> and there's a huge stack of books to, to be read. Okay, let's dive into the soul age. Okay, so wait a second. Okay. Everything visible, Heidi? Yes, yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. 
Do you see that? I see it all. Okay. Go ahead. Fine. Yes. We're talking. I see uh, everything. Yeah. Okay, fine. So today it's about the soul ages. And um, as we mentioned in our first uh, talk, um, if you ask, what does a soul want here in life? Want, what does a soul want here uh, to uh, experience? It is about the development of love and mindfulness and understanding. And the soul ages are um, very helpful to understand it in a deeper way. Um, we have talked about the matrix the last time and the soul ages, as you see um, on, on, the, on the right side, um, is a part of the energetic matrix a soul has. So, if we are talking about the soul ages, um, you have to know that there are five cycles uh, of ages. There is the cycle of infant soul age, child soul age, young soul age, mature soul age, and old soul age. Uh, age and these five cycles are divided in seven steps so uh, if you um, cut it short you uh, would say oh you are a mature soul five let's say so that means that you are maybe uh, a mature soul in the fifth step And uh, each of these cycles have different, um, different themes, different uh, learnings, what the, this cycle is about. Um, today, we will mostly concentrate on young souls, mature souls, and old souls, because these soul ages um, mostly um, surround our world. Um, infant souls and child souls, um, usually, we, we aren't usually so connected with them or confronted with them. It's interesting. And, um, so, yeah, I see. Uh, the, um, how is that? You say that in our world, there are much more young souls, mature souls and old souls, but there are still infant souls and child souls. Uh, does it mean, and I think you, it's written in the book and we talked about it before, that at some point, the souls come from somewhere into existence. And then they have to first do the first step of an infant soul, and then the second, and so on. And then they go into child souls with every reincarnation. So when you say that there are not so many infant souls and child souls, that means that for a long time, there were no fresh souls coming back on the earth. Oh, you, you have to repeat the question. Uh, it was... Yeah. Um, I, I meant that as we have few infant souls and child souls at the moment on, in the world, you said, does it mean that for, for, for a long time, new fresh souls have come in from the universe or wherever they come from? Uh, yes, there, there are not so few um, infant souls or child souls, but... Uh, they, they are mostly concentrated uh, on uh, areas which um, you usually call the third world. So it's uh, in Africa, India, and uh, parts of South America where they concentrate. They, they do live in uh, the Eastern world as well, but um, not so many of them. Um, and indeed, um, 
the, the last uh, birth of many new uh, souls um, was about, I think, 400 years ago. And uh, so the uh, the Durchschnitt, the, the average, the, uh, the, the average um, age develops. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. And so, um, is still, let me yeah, ask you. So the young souls and mature souls and even the old souls, they have already done a huge amount of, of lives on this planet. Is this what, what you say? Yeah, uh, the, the biggest population is young souls mm, okay. all over the world. And uh, that's helpful because they are the ones who really keep things going. Um, as I will uh, talk about a bit later. Mm, and let's say for in Germany, uh, the mature souls and old souls together uh, are about 30, a bit more than 30%. And this is quite a huge uh, mass that is um, more than in most of the other countries in the world. There are some uh, countries uh, which have a bigger population of mature and old souls, um, as um, for example, uh, Holland, uh, the Netherlands, or uh, Switzerland, or um, Finland, or Ireland, I don't know. Um, yeah some of these countries. Um, and in, in uh, England, in America, um, the population of mature souls and old souls uh, are a bit lower, um, but they gain influence. And you, mm, uh, you can see that by uh, the development of uh, people who think about mindset, reflection of oneself and personal development. Every uh, person that uh, follows our talk, for example, are surely mature or old souls. Yeah, I can understand because that because you said you said the young souls are considered with doing and not so much with reflecting, no? And mature right. souls and old souls are digging deeper into trying to understand what is going on. And so one of the things to understand more is what you are presenting. Yeah, so the, the infant soul cycle is really about um, getting um, a connection to the body, getting, um, a hint of what is matter, uh, what are the dimensions of um, the world, really basic things uh, to experience. Um, something like you, you living in a biological family, you have family connections. Um, this is different as in every other world. Our world is unique in some um, in some points as we have time and space for example uh, we have yeah we have a body um, we are vulnerable our body is vulnerable we, we die we suffer we enjoy um, so there, there are some, um, some things that are really unique in this world. And uh, to get in touch with these um, terrestrial dimensions, 
um, that is what infant souls learn. The child soul age is um, about mm, like, like children from the age from, let's say, four to 10. It's about um, recognizing, oh, I have, uh, I am a person. I am an individual. I have a family and I can create things. How wonderful, how astonishing. This are, um, these are things that the child cycle um, is about. And if you regard, for example, um, many people in India, um, they, this is a population uh, with many, many child souls. And um, I don't know if anybody of you have, um, have been in India before. So um, a friend told me that she was so uh, astonished that um, the man who drove her in a rickshaw, um, a um, he first, when, when she uh, entered the rickshaw, um, she came to her and touched her face and touched her hair like a child. And they don't make really plans. They are not interested in careers. Um, they live from now to the next now. And uh, um, they are spon very spontaneous and uh, they spread love spontaneous and they spread brutality spontaneous. When you remember childhood, uh, you know that um, there are some ages where it's very, very interesting to, when you have, when you have a fly, to pull out the legs of the fly, just to watch with how few uh, legs she can move and when you do that you don't think about the suffering of the fly when you pull out their their legs you just do it and say oh how interesting oh how funny how she walks with and so on and that has nothing to do with ruthlessness um it is, yeah, the, the being, being uh, astonished and uh, curious about how the world works. Heidi? Yeah, that makes sense. I'm sorry, I, I don't interfere very often because I see that we are uh, interfering sometimes. And so when you... When you ask me, I will be here, but I try not to interrupt you, okay? Fine. But I can really see that. Um, it, we have sometimes still the uh, memory of that when you get excited about, about something, no? When, which you didn't know, and now you figure that out, you know? That is the energy of a child soul, although we are older souls. <laughs> Child soul means, uh, as far as I've understood, that a person who is having living in the child soul period uh, has only this um, modality to to react to to the world, while uh, young souls or mature souls and older souls might have that too, but they have others uh, more developed. No? They learned okay. already. Yeah, because we know it from from many lives ago. We know. <laughs> yeah. So the, the experience uh, we we have internalized this experience, and um, we can still um, connect ourselves with these experiences. Um, when I when I explained child souls in this way, um, it's very important. Um, to understand that 
um, from a spiritual view, there is nothing wrong with um, suffering or there is nothing wrong with loving or enjoying. From the spiritual view or from the view of the soul, um, every experience is just an experience and um, very worthy because it's an experience. And um, it is not the, the soul uh, doesn't uh, divide in good or bad. The soul sees everything as equal. Yeah, and, and I on the. <laughs> I wanted to add that uh, according to uh, the archetypes of the soul, the soul comes here on the planet to learn and to have experiences, which otherwise, as a soul without a body, couldn't have. So uh, suffering, as you said, is just an experience. And it's uh, joy is just an experience, which is important to go through, because otherwise you don't know how it is. No? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and indeed, when we suffer, it hurts. So on the uh, on the terrestrial uh, sphere, uh, it does matter. And um, I think this is a very important thought um, that both of these spheres do exist parallel. It's not only this or only that, it's both at the same time. Yeah. Let's have a, a closer look on uh, the young soul age. Okay? Or do you have a question about infant souls or child, child, child souls? No. I don't have a question anymore. It's only to, to stress it again that the spiritual uh, part and what is on the world are two things, as you said, which are parallel. No? In the world, certain things are a reality and for the soul, uh, the reality is different, but it's at the same time. They are both. Uh, and I think that is needed to understand because if you are only uh, concerned with the world, yes, there's a lot of horrible things going on and you, you get mixed up in this. When you are only into the spiritual world, you think you are that, then you can say, oh, we have chosen that all by ourselves and things like that. Yes, but no, you know, the soul has chosen when it was there. But you as an incarnated being, you are, you have, you are combined, co connected with this soul, but you are not this soul anymore. So you are facing the reality of this world. And so also your soul, before you were born, has chosen to this, no, this constellation with which you are here. That doesn't mean that what you find here and meet here is unimportant. It is important, you know. And uh, um, to add another thought, um, nothing we experience here, uh, nothing um, from which we suffer uh, is punishment. In the, um, in the theory or in the concept of the archetypes of the soul, Mm, there is not such thing as mm, punishment for anything. Yeah, very, yeah. very important to, to keep that in mind. It's not our, what we try to, to say sometimes, oh, you have done this and that's why you have to suffer now. Uh, that's a strange way of, you know, it's a bit of Catholic uh, doctrine, but maybe it's not what it really is. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the spiritual world is not uh, 
moralistic. <laughs> Everything is experience. Okay, so coming to the topic of the young souls, okay? The young soul cycle is about finding the power of the me or of the I. I. It's about defining oneself through deeds and through activity. I am what I do. This is uh, the reason why, ex um, for example, career and status is so important to young souls. And it's about overcoming borders. So the young souls usually are the pioneers in every uh, dimension, not, not only pioneers uh, like explorers um, finding new, new land. Um, it's about overcoming borders in, uh, in every dimension in every topic, in the science or in um, uh, everything I, you can yeah, yeah. Can I say something? Maybe you mean more overcoming limits because borders looks a little yes. bit like countries going from one country to another. Yes, that too, yeah, you know, yeah, as yeah, yeah, yeah. Columbus did. But what you say is science is more overcoming limits. We think that's limited. And then we find out, oh, no, there is more, there is more. So scientists would be a good example for young souls also. But also street uh, workers in the sense of uh, who is building streets, who is building houses, uh, these active people who do, are doing careers and uh, building businesses. And uh, these would be young souls too, wouldn't they? Limits, yeah, good. <laughs> um, uh, can you say that? I said also people like constructors of the house or or mm -hmm. even, you know, activists for, for climate or for the Amazon or something who are actively doing something. Are they young souls? Uh, if you uh, if you mentioning you're mentioning architecture or um, these topics that uh, can surely be young souls, the activists are um, concerning uh, uh, world's health. Let's say so. Um, mostly are mature souls. Um, Maybe we can talk about that later, and then you can explain why, uh, what the difference is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is important to know that young souls have a mindset that divides in black and white and right and wrong. There is either this or that. They think in dimensions of opposites. And to learn, to be able to learn what they have to learn, they can't empathize. That means that they are not able to stand, um, to, um, to stand in the shoes of uh, another person. They can't switch the position, as you say so. Uh, they they can't uh, really feel what the other feels. They have yeah. feelings, but um, they, uh, it's more a projection than uh, an empathetic switch. They cannot uh, take another perspective. They are caught into their own perspective, no? Right, and uh, they have, um, usually they have no interest to reflect themselves. If you reflect yourself, it's a bit like you're uh, moving beside you and have a look at you 
from uh, that outer position, right? And this uh, movement, they can't do. They are in their eye. And this is very important. Um, the young soul cycle has warrior energy. And um, when you remember what warrior energy is about, it's activity, it's doing, it's fighting for things uh, or fighting against things. Um, and uh, it's very physical. And so um, the young soul um, is connected with all these things. Um, I have some examples of persons and perhaps it might be interesting to talk about young souls using these examples, okay? So we, oh, sorry. Uh, here are um, the learnings a young soul has to do on the one to seven step. So the first learning on the young soul cycle is me and my body are identical. I can create my body as well as I can create me. And the second is I create my world as I like. The, second, the third one is friends become enemies, enemies become friends. How astonishing. That could be. Yeah, we see it all the time, no? Uh. <laughs> yeah, for, for us, uh, it is no big thing. But for the young souls, which uh, who have this uh, two-dimensional perspective on things, it's either, so you are a friend or, the, or you're an enemy. If you remember um, old Western movies, John Wayne and so on, uh, during the, the first five minutes, you know who are the good ones and who are the bad ones. So the good ones are wearing the white hats and the bad ones are wearing the, the black hats. You remember? Yeah, that is classical young soul thinking. Hmm? So there can't be gray in the middle. And the third step or the third learning of a young soul, friends become enemies, enemies become friends, uh, is very important to learn that things might change and might change in a very deep way. And this change um, is the first step that rules can change as well. How astonishing. The, the, first le the fourth learning is renunciation of revenge gener generates justice. And the fifth is, I take my life in my own hands. Um, these are lives which usually, usually have that um, from poor to millionaire lives. <laughs> these big switches uh, on, on, so of social levels, or the other way around as well, or both, no? from poor to millionaire, and then again, back again also the very uh, expressive lives. Yeah, I thought that's the American way, dream, the American way of, of, of life, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. The sixth step is uh, my behavior causes meaning. What I do has an impact on other people or yeah, and I bear responsibility is the last step of the young soul. It's not that I own responsibility or I carry, uh, no, it's I 
um, or I am responsible. No, not quite. I bear responsibility is something different. So, but let's have a look at, uh, at some examples. Yeah, we have, let, hmm? me, let me talk, say that I bear responsibility compared with I create my world as I like is a huge step in the development inside the cycle of the young soul. Oh, when yes, you start yes. to bear responsibility, you are sort of beginning to grow up, you know, in some way. Yeah. So that's interesting when we come over then to the to the next stage of the mature soul. Yeah, yeah. So here are some examples. Uh, and I try to choose people uh, who, who you might know. So Paris Hilton is a sage, young soul first step. Me and my body are identical. She defines herself very much uh, through her appearance and her status. We have a person you surely know, Mr. Trump, a king uh, with um, arrogance and greed as fears. He is a young soul, step two, and he is a perfect example of I create my world the way I like. That's what he does. And he does it perfectly. From a spiritual view, he is perfect. He does a really, really good job from a spiritual view. From uh, other views, you can discuss it. <laughs> but it's, it's very... <laughs> It's very important no? that we cannot just say or oh, dismiss a person for what they are doing. On the stage where the person is, they are probably doing the right thing. And we, we try to, to forget that. We try to blame them for everything. Yes, from your own point of view and from your stage of development, you might even, you know, of your soul age, uh, you might say, no, that's all wrong and so on. But you cannot see everything only from your own uh, vision. You have to see, to take into account more things. And when you understand that he is a young soul, step two, where they create the world the way I like, that's the experience they need to do in this moment. And so he had the perfect opportunity to yeah. do that. And he did that. So he was great in many ways, you know, but maybe not as you like it. That's a different discourse. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. And if you um, if you remember that um, young soul too means the, com the energetic combination of um, warrior energy from young soul, soul and step two, two means um, artist energy. So it's a very artistical way to uh, live warrior energy. And yeah, he is um, really funny sometimes. <laughs> and he is really creative uh, in the ways he, uh, he uses networking and power and uh, to, uh, to live his, um, his claims. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what, what people were so astonished about, you know, because he wasn't, it didn't fit into any, any, uh, uh, how do you say, grid, you know, but he, he did it in his way. So in the artistic, in a creative way. And, you know, from this point of view, he was really great. I mean, he still is, he's still alive, so. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you know, like, people who are on the opposite, oh no, that they have a difficult difficulty probably to recognize that mm -hmm. what he came on the world for, on the planet for, he did it perfectly. And he had the good luck to find the, the right surrounding, the right position to do that, no? Yeah. And um, if, you, um, if you remember Barack Obama, is a mature soul step six. So he is on a very different level 
um, from his soul development. And uh, as in the USA, most of the people are young souls. Um, there were many who didn't understand his mindset and he, who didn't understand his, his way of thinking. And um, so it is, uh, and Hillary Clinton uh, is um, Matteo Stoll, step three. And she was more similar to Barack Obama than to, than to Donald Trump. And so I, I wasn't very uh, surprised that um, they elected Donald Trump because um, he is nearer to most of the people living in the USA than Barack Obama is. Exactly. And that's also why he has so many followers and who are defending him because they said he's speaking their language, but it's more than that, that they are in mm -hmm. the same phase of soul development. And that's really connecting. No? So. Yeah. And it's, um, it's about um, the similarity um, or resemble of, of the energy as well. People um, unconsciously um, feel the energy, which is closer to their own. Okay, another one you might know, Young Soul Step 3, Josef Stalin. I think he's a king, or he was a king, and uh, Young Soul 3 is warrior energy combined with warrior energy. So it's the most powerful, um, oh, a bit similar to, uh, to Young Soul 7. But yeah, it's, it's very, very powerful and it's about friends and enemies changing. And uh, yeah, if you know um, how he ruled, and how many people he murdered, um, you can see that there is a very, very strong fighting energy in him. So we have a healer, Young Soul Step 6, Florence Nightingale. I don't know if you remember this woman. Yeah, I do. I have heard about her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Florence Nightingale was um, a person who um, uh, uh, was very um, ambitious to help people. Um, and uh, she also was uh, involved with uh, the ah, wie heißt denn das? Mm, mit der Frauenbewegung. Uh, uh, women's, women's, women's movement. Mm -hmm. Women's movement, yeah. Mm -hmm. My behavior causes meaning. So what she did and what her soul wanted to experience is that he would have, she would have a uh, an influence um, which is connected with a higher, higher moral view. Yeah, and we have several young souls, step seven, as you see here. I bear responsibility, as you see, um, Putin, he doesn't really, he, he isn't really responsible, but he has a high position, big influence 
in his way. And so did Frank Sinatra, also did Elvis Presley. There were big influences. Um, and I think, for example, that um, Frank Sinatra's friendship with uh, black people um, had an influence on, on others, for example. No, not only his singing of maybe less his singing, but more his uh, behavior with colored people or connection to colored people, which was in these years um, very strange and very, very rare. Okay. Can I, can I ask you who the other two are? I don't recognize them, the woman and the, the man on the... It's Madonna. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the man uh, um, in the back is uh, Richard Burton. Ah, okay. I'm George not so very much in this, in this cultural yeah. surrounding, so I yeah. don't know them. Okay. And George W. Bush. I knew that one, yes, but the other two, I have heard of them, the names, but I'm not familiar with their faces. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to the material souls, okay? The, the uh, step between young soul to material soul is very big and very important because as a young soul you are so connected with the outer world and now it's about diving into your inner world as a material soul you start to reflect yourself you start to um, want to have a look behind yourself and behind motivations. Uh, so the world um, is from very simple to very complex. And um, to, and it's about responsibility. So um, when you asked me about the activists, uh, they don't bear responsibility, they are, want to be responsible. They want to leave, as they say, no footsteps. So they, um, they fight, they, they don't so much fight against things, they more and more fight for things. That is a big difference as well. And uh, to dive into the inner world, the material souls love problems. Not on the world uh, level, but on the spiritual level. And as you see, they, if, we, if we don't have a problem, we create ourselves some. <laughs> And they love difficult relationships because that's the way they learn most. Let's have a look at the topics, the learnings of the material souls. The first is experience freedom in dependency. I think just reading this line makes clear that it gets very complicated during the mature <laughs> soul age. It is not that simple anymore, friends and enemies, me, me, me. It's uh, Differentiert. 
differentiated is more mm -hmm. complex also no yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. experience freedom independency the second one is forgive injustice for yourself and others these are people who um, often get involved in, uh, in complex situations concerning guilt, uh, moral guilt, guilt in crime, anything like that. The third step is serve. Let yeah. me ask, uh, 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 still for the first two. Experience freedom, independency. Does that mean you are dependent? Maybe like we are now in this present Corona situation, we are dependent on on the situation. We have to stay at home and whatever. Mm -hmm. But then, mature soul in the first level, they become able or they are able to see to find the freedom in this situation which is actually closing them into something mm -hmm. but they can still inside experience freedom is it that completely right yes okay and forgive injustice uh, that means you have we can take the same uh, ex example you can feel that you are treated in with injustice but you still are able to say, okay, I can forgive you. If it's your husband who is uh, uh, hitting you or something, but you can say, okay, you did it not to hit me, but to, because you went out of your head or something like this. Is this what you mean? Yeah, um, i give another example. Uh, imagine um, um, a doctor who has to, uh, to decide uh, not let, let's say he, he works in hospital and he has to decide, um, do I give um, this medicine to that person if he hasn't enough or to the other? And that is something very complicated and he has to deal with it. Uh, and maybe he um, feels guilty for it. And to... And he, he can learn, or he has to learn, that um, you can only really keep on living when you forgive. Yeah. And this is, <laughs> I'm coming in with another thought. It's a little bit curious because it seems nowadays that forgiveness is not really a very fashionable so that people try to make other people guilty instead of forgiving them so my question is even if we are grown or oh, let me see does that mean that people who are so so many people who are not willing to forgive are still in previous stages of soul development or can that be that when you are in further stages of development soul development that you have forgotten or I, I don't find it so important and still don't forgive yourself for instance for certain things just a question which makes me think yeah first uh it seems to me uh it's important to recognize that they are connected with that subject forgiving forgiving or guilt and so on and it could be that it's a young soul that he hasn't developed uh, this um, capability or ability. Um, and um, a third thing could be each of these steps, um, you live in two to four lives. It's not one step, one life you have more lives on one step because it's complicated to learn. And so you have to repeat and to develop uh, that learning. 
And it could be that it's the first life on material soul step seven, uh, step two, for example. Yeah. Then we have at step three, serve an unjust master loyally. Um, that is a learning I always think about when um, I um, hear about a couple and mm, maybe uh, the woman is really, the wife is really unjust and uh, suppresses her man, her husband, and everybody of his friends say, you have to leave her, go away from her, what are you doing, and so on. And he stays, and he stays, and he stays. And that is not only because maybe he has the fear of martyrdom, but maybe he is on level three of a macho soul, and he has to experience that's this kind of relationship. Um, this third step is about um, making yourself more and more independent from that suppression without being illoyal. Very interesting. So think about it when you sometimes don't understand relationships. <laughs> I actually was thinking about a friend of mine who always complained about her husband. I said, why don't you go away? Why don't you go away? But she, is, she kept staying there. So that makes yeah. me think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perhaps her soul says, oh, yes. What a wonderful experience, I love it. <laughs> and the psyche and the ego says, oh, how bad. That's it. <laughs> so at the fourth step, we have renounced something essential out of love. At the fifth, we have entrust life and destiny to others. We have at the six, uh, it's like um, repeating the, uh, the topic of guilt in a different way than in the second step, erase the barrier between guilt and innocence. And this is the step we already talked about, Heidi. When we mentioned these parallel worlds, this sixth step is about, um, really not thinking about but feeling that they are there are these parallel worlds with uh, with really different um rules so no on the one um on the one sphere yes we do things and these things we do causes uh, causes things uh, for other people and maybe causes harm. So there is guilt. We are responsible for the things we do and the impacts these things have. This is that is this sphere. And on the other hand, we have the spiritual fear that is the sphere we are talking about now. And both, where, where no moral exists, where no these rules exist, and both uh, are vivid at the same time. This is interesting. I want to talk about everyone, but now first on the six, because it seems to me that our um, law system in our Western world, at least, is built on that. Even the most guilty person is still, uh, as a human being, is still worth 
to be respected. So you cannot just, you shouldn't just kill them, you know, because you are realizing that on the level of humanity, or in this case, we could say on the level of soul, there is innocence. Is it that? It comes to my mind just now, you know? Yeah, yeah. And to recognize these are two different spheres or two different um, levels. But and existing at the same at time. The same time. Exactly. Right. So you uh, to 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 death punishment, for instance, would contradict that. So who is uh, who is um, uh, advocating death punishment is not on this level in the soul development, probably. You know, most of the pure souls wouldn't uh, wouldn't um, uh, prefer uh, death punish punishment. It's uh, typically typically uh, young soul way exactly. of punishing exactly yeah. the, the child soul punishment is to cut off the hand when somebody had stolen something mm -hmm. so it's a direct connection to the thing he did so hand off mm -hmm. that's interesting so who has created our uh, system let's say was in this level of development it's quite quite ahead isn't it and also the constitution and everything. But let me still talk about four. Renounce something essential out of love. Do you have um, an example? Yeah, I have some examples. I come back to your question. Okay. Uh, I have some examples. We have here Marilyn Monroe, but here too, a warrior. And uh, that was forgiving justice for yourself and others, as you remember. Mm -hmm. And he, she, uh, besides that she had martyrdom as one fear, um, was very connected with a feeling of guilt. And uh, she couldn't really forgive herself. And she had been uh, involved in several cases of injustice herself mm -hmm. in several ways. We have Hillary Clinton, Mature Three, as I mentioned, a warrior. Uh, and she served an unjust master loyally. Um, or she is the unjust master, could also be, because some of the learnings, you can switch this way or that way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the relationship to Bill uh, is interesting, <laughs> as far as we know. We have, you ask about Mature Four. So we have Angela Merkel as Mature Four, a healer, impatience and self sabotage. Um, you can say about her political decisions whatever you want, but she has been. Uh, the chancellor of Germany so many years. She has no private life at all. She gives everything to her country. So she renounces her own personal benefit and her own uh, personal sphere for the love, for her love to the country. Um, I personally uh, am not, I, I don't agree with every decision she makes, no. but I trust her 
in being honest and really want to serve the country. She loves power, yes, she has it in her matrix, yes, but I think she really is uh, so motivated to do what she thinks is the best. Yeah. I and this is, this is now interesting because you have also here written down the, the, the fear uh, parts. Impatience and self-sabotage. I think that's exactly what we can see in this this very moment now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and which at the end, uh, even if the motivation is love for the country and wanting to do the best, these uh, fears can turn everything into, I don't want to say the opposite, but we interfere quite a bit with it, isn't it? Yeah, and she, she is pragmatic. Mm. Mm. So she, the first thing she thinks is, how can we do that? How can we fix it? And everything is just uh, mm, worth, worthy if you can do something practical with it. All these theories are the same. We have to do something. Yeah. Yeah, and here comes the impatience in, no? Because she wants to do something and she is not patient enough to listen enough to, uh, to, to, to what would be the best. And she, she limits herself on, on the pragmatism on not enough a uh, wide, wide view on what needs to be done and to be yeah. done. So if you have only three ideas or three poss possibilities, oh, who, who says uh, if you think the world uh, is made of nails and you have a hammer, then you, you see everything is a nail and all the other things you don't see and you can't handle. And this can very much be impatience. Um, but we haven't talked about this fears yet. We do that the next time. But I find it interesting that you have listed them here. It explains yeah. to me something just now. Yeah. You know, thank you. And if you if you see, see how she has self sabotage. When she, uh, what rarely happens, um, goes in uh, to holidays or to vacation, she breaks her hips or something like that. She messed, she messes it up every time. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, and I also see it in the present development wherever more critics come out. So she, she is not able to, to incorporate, to embrace that, but is going like, you know, like uh, in the same direction and this is leading to self-sabotage because she might now lose the well, um, how do you say, the recognition she had for so many years of good work. And at the end, bang, you know, that's, that's, that's difficult self-sabotage. And I'm, I'm seeing it coming about. So I'm, I'm really I'm sad for that also. Yeah. I have compassion with her, I have to say. Also, I'm really not agreeing with what she is doing, but as a person, as a human being, it's touching my heart. Thank you for, for having brought that up. Yeah, yeah, that is very interesting because in, in autumn, uh, her chancellorship will end. And uh, yes, perhaps she, um, she will be... Um, successful in ruining her recognition <laughs> to that now. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> okay, we have Mature Seven, Michael Jackson. This was about, uh, as you perhaps remember, recognize possibilities and limits of willpower. As you, if you regard um, his aims concerning his career, but more his aims concerning his um, out of you, 
his um, appearance. Appearance, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he went over every limit with martyrdom and self sabotage. And he was very creative uh, concerning that. Not so creative in music, but with himself and with uh, uh, his um, way of living. And he, yeah. And he had these high rises and deep falls, uh, which had something to do with um, willing and limits as well. And we have Mr. Gates, which is seven as well. His willpower uh, makes him almost ruler of the world. Okay, um, Heidi, we, uh, when I look at the time, uh, I ask myself if it might be useful to um, have a stop here and uh, to start talking about old souls um, some other time, what do you think? How long do you think it would take? Still another hour probably, uh, half an hour I mean. Um, half an hour at least okay so we do that uh, next time and, um, and put it together with the fears because you have already mentioned the fears here on these charts mm -hmm. and that's uh, saying so much of uh, uh, what people are about uh, I found it for myself and I understood what is uh, on the basis of the fears and what is coming out, like, you know, he has stubbornness. Stubbornness in itself is not a fear, but it's what uh, what is coming out of the fear, no? So, it's, a, it's the fear of unpredictability. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why he wants to give the vaccines to everybody, because he wants to be sure that everything goes as he likes to be. Anyway, yeah, let's do that. And uh, because the people might be a little bit um, overwhelmed, but you know, it becomes when you think in, in the audience, when you think that you might, when you have already found yourself, it's fine. But when you think there might be even a little bit more to you and you might be an old soul and not only a mature soul. So we uh, offer you the next time this observation of what the old soul is about. Yeah, thank you very much, Mayon, at this point, and we do it again. Thank you. Bye to you all. <laughs>